Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. These are the words of Winston Churchill, the British statesman, soldier and writer who served as Prime Minister during the Second World War. Unfortunately, many people consider failure fatal. It is a death sentence to their dreams and aspirations. They harbor such feelings of shame and despondency over a failed attempt that they never try again. They believe they are worthless and incapable of doing anything good. But is failure that terrible? Is it the end of the road as some people believe? I don't think so. Failure is success in progress, or as Mickey Rooney puts it, you always pass failure on your way to success. This means that failure is one of the many stops we must make on the road to success. We can't avoid it no matter how hard we try. It is a necessary ingredient for our life's journey. Failure is a teacher each time we fail, we gain a learning opportunity. A child learning to walk would fall multiple times before gaining stability on the ground. Imagine if toddlers decided never to stand again after their first fall. Failure exposes our weaknesses and strengths. Mistakes help us grow and insights from failed experiences makes us wiser. Failure opens our eyes to new paths and opportunities. It pushes us out of our comfort zones and inspires us to take new chances or go down a different and even a better path. We must change our perspective about failure to benefit from it. We must learn to view it as the ally it is, not an adversary. Failure is painful, no doubt, but do not let the pain or disappointment cripple or define your future. After you have mourned a while, dust yourself and try again. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. And on that note, I would like to welcome you to Practical Reflections, a web series powered by Logos Aflame Ministries. My name is Ella Akins, your host on today's episode. And as always, I bring you special greetings from the senior pastor and founder of the Logos Aflame Ministries, Pastor Grace Obi Johnson. Welcome back. The October to December Lamb Daily Devotional is available. It is a great resource to help you with your daily Bible reading. You can get your copy on Amazon, Okada Books, and Bam Books. If you love the content on this channel, please click on the subscribe and notifications buttons below. You're welcome to join our community of people who love the scriptures and are striving to achieve greatness in today's world through God's word. In this segment, we are reviewing our Bible readings from the 14th of October to the 20th of October. In the Old Testament, we read Jeremiah chapter 23 through to Jeremiah chapter 36. In these chapters, we discover that Jeremiah had been declaring God's word and warnings to Judah and Jerusalem for 23 years without a positive outcome. The people had persisted in their evil and remained unrepentant. The Lord finally sentenced them to 70 years of slavery in Babylon because of their wicked ways. He decreed that they would live as outcasts in a foreign land and be subject to taskmasters as they once were in Egypt. But God had not given up on Israel. He continued to watch over them while they were in captivity. He promised that after they had served their term, he would bring them back to their land and this time they would be healed of all their backsliding. Jeremiah 29, 11-14 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. In the New Testament, we read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 through to 1 Timothy chapter 5. In 1 Timothy, Paul sets out certain rules for the church and our leaders to ensure that they do not veer off from the faith into meaningless doctrines and myths. He instructs them to live a life of prayer and to be modest in dressing and conduct. 
Paul further directs that anyone who aspires to leadership must be above reproach and have a good reputation. They must hold firm to the truth and be faithful, trustworthy of respect within and outside the church. To Timothy, he says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given to you through prophecy when the body of the elders laid their hands on you. Is your life worth emulating by those around you? Do you make excuses as a youth and as a leader? Do you maintain a righteous reputation? Today is a good day to realign ourselves back to the right path. We have what it takes to live exemplary lives that will honor God. That's it for this edition. I trust you have enjoyed our discussion today. Please remember to keep reading your Bible on a daily basis. Also, we would love to hear from you. Please put in the comment section any of the Bible readings or devotional texts that have blessed you or your experiences with putting God's word into practice. Till next week, keep creating love and passion for God's word. God bless you.